What if I told you that switching to Linux wouldn't change anything for me, that my workflow would stay the same, my tools would stay the same, and my experience would be identical, except for two things. Battery life and phone integration. I can unplug my MacBook and it just works for hours while I edit, record, and render. So you're pretty much buying a battery? What a noob. The other day, I ran a poll in my YouTube channel because I genuinely wanted to know what the preferred OS of my audience was. As I daily drive Mac OS, I was expecting something similar. Out of the 544 votes, 60% go to Linux, 34% Mac OS, and 5% Windows. I was expecting the Windows results, but not Mac OS. I thought that the percentage would be higher. You have no idea how many times I've been told in the comments to switch to Linux because it's the operating system of the gods. So if my audience is mainly Linux, why don't I switch to Linux and create tutorials for window managers, distros, and all that good stuff? I bet my YouTube numbers would increase a lot. I've thought about this for a long time and I don't know what the real answer is. But I'll try to justify my expensive MacBook purchase and the fact that I'm perceived of what could be known as an Apple shill. I used to hate Apple and their Mac OS. Why? Like many people here for no particular reason. I had never used the operating system, but I didn't like their marketing and the stereotype of person that uses iPhones and MacBooks at Starbucks. All those hipsters that look like Hollywood stars, that's not me. I'm a rebel and I'm always a contrarian. Until I was given a MacBook at my previous job. I used the damn thing like a peasant, without a window manager, navigating through macOS workspaces, using Apple applications. I didn't love or hate it. It just was better than Windows. It felt snappier. But let me tell you something about Intel based Macs. They suck. They get hot. Battery does not last. They are utter and complete trash. And I would not recommend them to anybody. But I was used to that experience on Windows. So no big deal there. Then I was given an M1 MacBook Pro when they came out. Oh boy. You Linux fairies wouldn't understand. Once you pimp that bad boy and make it look like a Linux distro, there's no looking back. So this makes me wonder if the underlying operating system just works and gets out of the way, does it really matter? The operating system is just the base for you to run your tools. What I care about the most is the terminal and that NeoVim runs. That's it. Doesn't matter what operating system I use, my experience is always going to be the same, except if using Windows. That's pure and 100% trash. All I need to do is to cd into directories and open NeoVim there. And not even that because I switched to my most used directories as KD sessions. These used to be TMAC sessions in the past. I have a video in which I explain why I switched away from TMAX and uh, how I did it with Kitty. I'm going to leave it in the video description as well. So what do I really need in an operating system? A window manager, a keyboard mapper, a bar that shows me what's going on at the top, my terminal, and that's basically it. For my window manager, I use Yapai in macOS, and it beautifully does everything I need. Stack mode by default, some spaces configured in BSP, and move applications conditionally to another monitor when I'm streaming. Let me show that to you real quick. Just going to open my Yabai RC file, and they have a lot of rules configured in this file here. Okay, so I can configure transparency, a lot of different stuff. Okay, but something that I like about it a lot is, um, for example, the layout. I configure it a stack mode, and I configure some of the Mac OS desktops in BSP mode, like this desk three is where my terminal lives. This other desk five is where chat lives. When I live stream and I have multiple chats, that's where I put that. And I also have some conditions. There are some applications when I'm using more than one monitor, right? I want to move some applications to the non-streaming monitor. These are the applications listed here. So Yabai 
automatically and beautifully does that for me. Why? Because of privacy concerns. I don't want to show my email, calendar, password manager, and stuff like that in my streaming monitor. Now, for my keyboard mapper, I use a different tool. It's called Kanata. And Kanata allows me to run scripts and pretty much configure my keyboard overall. I'm just going to open this file so you can see my different Kanata layers. You can have a better idea here. But I basically do everything with Kanata. I position my Yabai windows. I switch the OBS scenes. I switch between different applications. There's a lot of stuff that you can do in Kanata. It's a really powerful tool. And the nice thing is that it's not for macOS only. It's cross-platform, so you can run it on macOS, Linux, and also Windows. Now, this is for my built-in MacBook keyboard. That's what I use Kanata for. But what do I use for my keyboard itself? The keyboard that you see here on the screen right now. For this, this is a Glove 80. It uses ZMK as the firmware. So I needed a way to run scripts from ZMK. I also do that. So if I switch to this other repo, you'll be able to see that here's my keyboard configuration file for ZMK. And I execute scripts. I use another tool. I explain all of this in detail in a video. I'm going to leave it in the video description as well. One other thing that you have to take a look at is the bar that is at the very top and that is called sketchy bar. So let me see if I can find the configuration file. Here it is sketchy bar. You just configure it with bash scripts. Basically, you can add, remove stuff to your liking. Notice that I show what application I'm on, the level of my microphone, both of my ISPs, if they're up or down, download, upload speed on my router, not on the computer, but on the router itself, OBS scene, CPU, a lot of stuff that is useful and that tells me something. Something that I'm curious about is why do people keep showing spaces in the bar at the top here? I see some rises with a lot of different spaces. So here's another hot take. You don't need workspaces and I'm gonna create a video on that soon. I do YouTube, so I need a few extra little things. I need an easy, flawless, and always working way of using my phone as a camera. I don't want to invest in a professional camera, and I don't want to use a webcam either. I don't want to be connecting cables using third-party applications. No, this is a core and essential feature for me. I open OBS to record a video, and my iPhone immediately, without plugging it in, is used as a camera. And I just hit record. No hoops, no hassles, no dependencies, no breaking changes. I can unplug my Mac, edit a two hour video, render it and upload it to YouTube, all on battery. I can unplug my Mac and close it for two weeks. When I come back to it and open it, I know the battery will not be drained. There's recent comments out there that Macs now are just literally a battery. I cannot confirm or deny this. All I know is that it works perfectly for me. Think pads, no thank you. The only hardware I would really give a try is one of those framework laptops. But I'm not purchasing that just to give Linux a go. But if they send one, oh man, I would be more than happy to give it a try. When it comes to choosing a distro, there are so many options that I don't know which one to go with. I know 100% that it won't be Arch, nor Gen 2, and not Nix. So this leaves me with one option only, Debian. Now the question becomes, what would I really gain from switching from macOS to Linux? Short answer is absolutely nothing. On the other hand, I would have to invest hours upon hours to make things work my way. I wouldn't use an install script like Omarchi. Do I have something against it? No. Omarchi wouldn't offer me anything different compared to the workflow I have currently in macOS. On the contrary, it would limit me and I would have to undo a lot of stuff to set up my keyboard centric workflow using Kanata to my liking. It's also based on Arch, which moves way too fast for my taste. I don't want to invest not even 10 minutes figuring out why something broke. If I break it, I'll fix it, but not if it broke, I'll fix it. I know, I know. Arch is the most stable thing on earth, especially if combined with Nix.
I just don't have the time to invest in setting all this up at the moment. Also, I don't feel comfortable just using a script. I want to build my system by myself. I know what's happening on each of the files in my macOS config. I know where I have to go if I want to modify something. But on the other hand, if I use a script that someone else created, there would be a lot of learning and reverse engineering involved. I've been running the latest macOS version for the past, I don't know, maybe five, six years. I have updated, never had any issues at all, except for the latest macOS version, macOS 26. I haven't had issues with it at all, but I don't like the glassy thing. It's just not for me. So I'm just going to let them cook. I'm just going to let them polish that version. I'm going to skip it and I'm going to upgrade when the next one comes around. I'm not sure if they will be moving back to the non-glassy look and feel or if they're going to stay that way, but it feels like beta at the moment. It's not a final product, so I'm just going to skip it for now. I use Linux every day, but on headless servers, all managed through SSH. Let me show that to you real quick. I'm just going to show here uh, my home session, home kitty session. I'm just going to run here uh, this command, okay? This is going to show me the containers that I'm currently running. And you'll be able to see that, for example, I have Docker 1 shown here. This is a Linux server, Docker 2, and Docker 3. This one is not running at the moment. I'm not exactly sure why. Oh, it's down. Okay. Yeah. Power went off, I don't know, a few days ago, and it never came back up. But all of the containers are distributed between the different hosts. So, Gonna check on this in a little while. Let me show you my servers real quick. Okay, so here's the portal. Here you can see the different type of servers that I have. DNS, Docker, load balancers, Kubernetes cluster here. Six Kubernetes hosts that are running here. Storage servers. What else do we have here as well? And uh, this other one. All of these are running Debian. No desktop environment, it's just managed through CLI. So based on all this, Debian feels more aligned with my macOS experience. So if I've ever switched to Linux, it would be Debian for sure. But at this point in time, the gains I would make from this switch would be 0%, even less than 0% because of my video editing workflow and the integration with the iPhone as the camera. I'll wait for Linux on ARM to catch up so that battery becomes as good as with macOS. And I'm also going to wait for a seamless computer and phone integration. I like that my phone is an extension of my computer and not a completely separate device. And I want this to feel native as part of the operating system. But what about your privacy? Aren't you scared that Apple is constantly watching you? Bro, you're on YouTube. You use Google services and probably even have an open source keylogger installed that you don't even know about. So if you're reading or watching this, you have no privacy, unless you fully go the Richard Stallman way. Is Linux bad and we all should switch to macOS? Hell no, use what works for you. The underlying operating system is just a tool, as long as it gets out of the way and allows you to use the tools you need. macOS is not completely lost. Under the hood, it's a really powerful and effective operating system. It seems there's a few people at Apple that still care, and hopefully it continues to be this way. I'm defending Apple better than they can defend themselves, so they should just send me free MacBooks.